Okay, welcome back from the break. You're still watching The Morning Rush here on Metro TV with me, Desi the Star, but of course, Anaya Tonobache. This conversation we're going to have is a big one. We're going straight to the UK, and they, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> we have a big man in the studio, right? And uh, off air, we're talking about all the things, but I'll, I'll be able to mention a bit of it. Now, I'll allow you to continue and introduce the, the rest because I know how difficult it is, it is sometimes when... You know, people go to school and when we are mentioning, we don't mention the right things. So I'll take my time and do the one I have here. So joining us this morning is, um, he actually went to one of the big schools in Ghana. Of course, the Moscow is still the best, but yeah. He went to Atiwa. <laughs> <laughs> he's at home. Dr. George Brown is our guest this morning. And he is um, a dental surgeon for Nitel Dental Practices in, the, in London. He's also the Dean of Academic Affairs for the City of London Dental School, and a whole lot. And so I mentioned just to I'll leave you to control the rest. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. Yes. You're a big man. Oh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm just another guy. Oh, that's, that's amazing. So how long have you been, been in the UK? Um, I've been in the UK 37 years. 37? Yes. What took you there? Um, I was a student at Kolebu doing okay. dentistry. And at mm. that time, Kolebu didn't have a dental school. Oh. So they sent some of us to England, some of us to Nigeria. Mm. And I was, shall I say, fortunate at the time. I was sent to King's College, which is one of the best dental schools in the world. And um, graduated there and then got employed by the, the hospital to stay with them. Okay. And um, the rest, as we say, is history. It's history. Yeah. Wow. And I, when I mentioned the best senior high school, I, I was praising my school. Yeah. Uh, but you went to Motown. I went to Motown, proper Motown. I'm an 82 <laughs> graduate. Okay. Um, so I'm an old man. Um, and I was there from one to upper six in those days. So I spent oh. seven years okay. in Motown, in, in Janfi House. Yeah. Mm. And, I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm told that your mate was uh, the... Um, president of Ashetsi University. Patrick was my classmate. Wow. Uh, Patrick, wow. Well, there are so many. Our, our year group has, I would say, punched about, above his weight. Mm. Uh, so um, the, the Achimoto 82 year group is a very vibrant and, thank God, very successful year group all the world over. We have the cardiologists like Acha Jamsin in America, Odonko. I'm sure you've heard of the last uh, first time ever where there was a, a proper transplant of a pig's heart to a human being. Mm. There was a 82 Janfi House Motown called Patrick Odonko there. Wow. I see. Uh, he was the cardiac anesthetist. Amazing. So one, we'll one be right in history. Yeah. yeah. One, one bit of the health sector <laughs> that I find interesting is den dentistry. Mm -hmm. Have you been to the dentist before? Oh dear. <laughs> 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 but she did. Yes. Wait, 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 last week. Just Saturday. Just Saturday. Uh -huh. what, is, what is fascinating about dentistry? Dentistry is, for me, one of the most important sectors of the medical profession. Mm. Um, the ancient Greeks said, your mouth is a mirror of your body. Mm -hmm. And they were right. Mm. We, are, we now know that... Um, if you are a regular attender at the dentist, you are less at risk of many common diseases. Let's take, for instance, gum disease. There's evidence that gum disease is linked with heart disease, diabetes, um, Alzheimer's disease, um, mothers having babies with low birth weight, and we, the men, mm. impotency. So, since whenever I come to Ghana, the most popular advert on radio and TV is aphrodisiacs for the men. <laughs> I'm, I'm always surprised. <clears throat> but it either means there's a problem mm. or we perceive that to be a problem. Okay. Now, but we are hitting it from the wrong angle. Mm -hmm. We're not healthy, mm. gently. I mean, you look at many people in public places, you're talking to them, you're looking at them and saying in your head, this guy needs to come and see me. Mm. <laughs> um, that's the problem, that we haven't been dentally educated as mm -hmm. a population okay. about the benefits of dental care. Mm. 
mm. go to England, the British government pays for everybody under 18 to see the dentist for free. I'm not saying the Ghana government should do that. Should mm -hmm. do that. Um, all nursing mothers or pregnant women till the child is a year old, the women get free dental care. Why? Because they realize that there is a need to maintain the health of these people and also to save money. I mean, if you go to the dentist regularly enough and the dentist can pick up that your gum disease has something to do with your, the rest of your health, they may recommend that you have say your blood sugar levels checked, you have that checked, diabetes picked up, is managed, then you don't have a problem. Mm. Now in Ghana, the two biggest chronic diseases are diabetes and hypertension, okay. which is also related to heart diseases. Okay, now heart diseases are linked to dental disease. Certain people need to go to the dentist um, regularly so that they don't develop things like endocarditis um, because of the bacteria populating their heart valves. You go back to most people, uh, ladies after 35, 40, may start moving into menopause mm -hmm. and maybe on certain drugs. You want to do preventative care so that they do not need extractions. Because if they are on bisphosphonates because you want to prevent osteoporosis, mm -hmm. what are you doing? You're making their bones and their jaws as hard as glass. Yeah. So if they wait till they have dental disease and then need an extraction, you've put them at risk of conditions like emrange, mm -hmm. which could kill them. So just a short run through a few things. Yeah. And you realize how important it is that you go to the dentist regularly so that prevention is delivered rather than waiting for problems to try and join the curve at the yeah. end of the curve. Yeah. The dentist is really, really important. Some people say you should go to the dentist every six months. I don't buy that argument. I was I about to say that, is the six months okay? This is not scientifically proven. Okay. I think if you go to your dentist and you have a good dentist, the dentist will assess your mouth properly enough to then say, look, you need to come every three months. You need to come every six months. You need to come every mm. year. You need to come every two years. Because it, the assessment is then based on the true fact of your health. It shouldn't just be a, a conveyor belt. Say, oh, you come every six months. Why? There has to be a reason. Yeah. Now, if there is no reason, then I don't know what the dentist is talking about. Mm. So there has to be. And in certain parts of the world, guidelines are available mm -hmm. so that you can follow that guidance. So this person met this matrix. So I want to see you in two years' time. This person only satisfies up to this point. I need to see you every three months okay. until we get you over to move you on. Yeah. The, the, the awareness, you say, isn't really enough out there. But most people, especially individuals, tend to feel that I brush my teeth twice in a day. Mm. I have my brush. My brush is hot. It takes <laughs> off things from my teeth. Why should I go to the go dentist? To which the you've, dentist. A, you've mm. actually explained. I want to touch on the type of brush we use here in Ghana. I mean, growing up, I don't want to mention types, but there are types that are very hard. There are types that are very soft. And people have complained that the hard ones are actually safer than the soft one. How true mm -hmm. is that? Okay, I'll, I'll take you from another point before mm -hmm. I answer your question. Okay. And the point is simple. How many of us had, were taught how to brush our teeth? I was um, taught. I was taught. Properly, by somebody who knows what they're doing. Oh, okay, not about my parents. Mom, my <laughs> So we were not taught yeah. how to brush. Mm. So we don't know how to brush our teeth. Yeah. So our dentists have a, a responsibility to educate us mm. on how to brush our teeth yeah. properly. First one. Now, coming, if you're taught how to brush it, you know what tools you need to use. Yeah. But let's go to the toothbrush. Mm -hmm. Hard toothbrush is a no, 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 no. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you are, I, I always say to my patients in England who ask me that question, the framers of the word had thought about it. That's why they didn't call it tooth scrubbing. And they called it tooth brush. brush. Okay. Okay? So there's a reason behind okay. that. So you want, averagely, a medium hardness brush. Mm -hmm. If you've got the technique right, you won't need anything to scrub it because the brush is not going to make your teeth whiter. Mm -hmm. mm. The brush is going to make your teeth cleaner. Cleaner. Okay. okay. So if you, work, if you have the right technique, you will brush your teeth well. And I'll move forward, because I like to educate, and say that 
all of us have been to a public place and put our hand in a tap mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you feel something slimy. Yeah. Yeah. That is what you want to remove from your teeth when you brush your teeth. It's called a biofilm. Okay. So you're not scrubbing some big tick thing off your tooth. Okay. You're removing the biofilm. Yeah. And removing the biofilm, you don't need something terribly hard. Mm -hmm. You need a brush, a medium brush. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if that is the case, then you don't need a hard yeah, brush. No. Okay. Wow. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to say, I don't know if like in 30 seconds you could just help us how we could do that properly. The, how, how to brush our teeth. Oh dear, I don't have props here, but I'll try. I mean, I'll use my finger. I'm not insulting anybody. If I pick my finger up like that, how many sizes has my finger got? It's got five. One, two, three, four, five. Right? Okay. Put them together. Brush them. One, two, three. What happened to four and five? So even if you were the best brusher, mm -hmm. you've done at best... 60% of your tooth. But you're not. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anybody's name in the Guinness Book of World Records. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. if we're Joe Average like you am, I am, you're doing at best 40% of your teeth. Mm -hmm. Now, if you gave me this nice room to clean, I'm a cleaner and I clean 40% of the room and left, would you pay me? No. Yeah. But we do that with our teeth, which are more valuable. And we say, yeah, I brushed my teeth. I don't need to go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. That's the first point. So brushing your teeth, you need to first have a system. It doesn't matter whether you're using an electric toothbrush or manual toothbrush. I recommend electric, and there's evidence. I like evidence-based. There's a report called the Cochrane Report, which has done, looked at all the research worldwide and then come up with recommendations. So your dentist should be referring to the Cochrane Report and telling you mm -hmm. how to brush your teeth. But let's take your teeth. You have divide your mouth into four quadrants, yeah. each quadrant. Yeah. And take your brush, angle your brush 45 degrees to where the gum meets the tooth. And then you go gently. You see? <laughs> you see my thumb is mm -hmm. doing this. Yeah. So it makes the brush move in a circular motion. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So by doing that and working your way around, what are you doing? You're cleaning around where the tooth and the gum meet. That's the most important place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you go round, all round, and then you go to the inside, all round. Then go to the biting surface, all round. And you go to the other side and do the same. So effectively, you're not just going scatter Scut bullets. <laughs> okay. But you picked a quarter, mm -hmm. a quarter, mm -hmm. a quarter, a quarter. Now you can happily say, I've done the three surfaces, that's 60%, mm. effectively. Then you can take the little brushes, a pop, I won't name any brand, but the little brushes called interdental brushes. And then you go, they're different sizes, and you go in between the teeth, not toothpick. Because all you're doing is you're shooting out the big bits. <laughs> but we agreed that there's a, uh, a biofilm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you need a brush to remove that film mm -hmm. from in between all the areas. Yeah. Now, at best, you have attempted all the five surfaces. Mm -hmm. That would take you at least two to three minutes. Okay. 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 We'll be wrapping up very soon, but what is that one ingredient we are, so, we are supposed to know? Uh, our toothpaste have that uh, one because now they are different types. This one is for strong teeth, whitening, mint. Uh, mm, it's a yeah, lot. Yeah. All the brands are just gimmicks. Mm -hmm. All you need in a toothpaste mm -hmm. is if it's an adult, 1,450 parts per million of fluoride. So you go, you look at it, fluoride. you will see it written there. Not 1,000 parts for an adult. Mm -hmm. It should be 1,450. Okay. For a child, under 12, mm -hmm. it should be 1,000. Okay. For a child under 3, it should be 800. Okay. So you have to pick the right toothpaste for the right age group. Okay. And also the amount of toothpaste. You don't need a full brush. Mm -hmm. All you need is the size of a peanut for okay. an adult mm -hmm. and a child a smear. So when they see the advert and they put the whole thing right mm -hmm. on, they want you to buy more. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. I, 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 yeah. I, I get it. But, yeah. but look, we've got a like... Two That's all. Let him answer this last okay, one. Okay, yeah, the no. teeth whitening. Now we get people going to the dentist to um, put laser, like go through the whole laser process. There, yeah. I've even used some before. The gel, I put on the gel, up, up, upper parts, lower parts, then I put on the machine for like 15 minutes. Okay. Is it safe? Okay, I will say this. There is nothing like laser whitening. It doesn't exist. Okay. It's a high intensity light. To whiten your teeth, what you need is hydrogen peroxide or carbon peroxide at the right strength, 
otherwise you will burn your gums. Okay. Okay? So, to effectively whiten your teeth, which is safe, by the way, and actually will help your gums, mm. the best way is to have a professional make the appropriate whitening trays that fit onto your teeth. Mm. And then they put the right gel in it. Mm -hmm. Choose okay. whether you want to weld that tray at night or during the day. Okay. Because the strengths of the gels will mm. be different. Mm -hmm. And the period of which you wear it will be different. Now, if you do that, you will succeed. Now, the white intensity light is not a laser. Okay. It's okay. a white intensity light. What does it do? You put a gel, a certain strength, and you do it for three shots of 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. What you do is when you put it in the light, activates mm -hmm. the chemical reaction to whiten your teeth. But as we've, we've said, the longer the contact time, mm. the better the result. Okay. Okay. So if you're sitting in the chair, if you said to me, I'm getting married tomorrow morning, I'll consider the tooth whitening using the, the light. But any other time, I'd rather use a tray. Mm. Okay. Because okay. that will give you a better result. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's been an, an interesting conversation this morning. We're wrapping up on this, but in 30 seconds, Doc, with all this experience that you have, um, what do you make of the training in Ghana and also what are you doing to, to help with that? Training in Ghana is good. We train dentists, but we're training dentists. We haven't created a, 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 a gap. We, we train mm -hmm. good dentists and then we have good specialists. Okay. But in between, there's nothing. Okay. Okay. So somebody finishes house job, finishes um, a posting in town, and goes to set rock up in anywhere in Accra, okay. opens a little clinic, and says, I'm a dentist. And that's it. Fine. There's nothing wrong because you are licensed, you are mm. committed, you're equipped. But patients, we, I call them the MTV population. We all now know what's happening all around the world. Mm. We want the same. You've just been asking me how tooth whitening. Mm. Um, it wasn't taught in dental school. Mm -hmm. um, people are losing teeth. How many of us want to wear the dentures that our grandmother wears? Mm -hmm. No. So if people are going to lose teeth or people are going to need keep their teeth to old age or grind their teeth because of stress, okay. I've got to be skilled enough to deliver that. That gap in between, so we provide enhanced training, is not there. Okay. And that is what we, we need to do. I'm, I'm hoping that somewhere along the line, my, uh, my school will be able to help people with that. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Dr. George Brown, it's been an amazing uh, conversation talking about dentists. But wait, if, if someone has halitosis, halitosis, how, how, do you, how do you tell the person in, in 20 seconds? <laughs> how do you tell the person? How do you? If, you are, if, if the person is your good friend, I think the person is, my friend, come around with me. Let's take you to a dentist. You, we may, you may need some help. Okay. You may not have to tell them that. It's like if somebody has body odor, you don't just buy them perfume. You, just, you recommend that they go and see a doctor. Okay. It? Those of you who are applying on my tooth brushes and paste, please just take the two dentists and that's going to work. Thank you so much sir, for coming this one. We really do appreciate you. Uh, you coming and sharing this with us. All right. So that was uh, our time with Dr. George Brown uh, from the UK. He's a, he's, a, he's a big man when it comes to dentistry, uh, Director of Academic Affairs, uh, City of London Dental School and, and a whole lot in the UK. Hopefully when he comes back into Ghana, he will be joining us yeah. here.